Tamam. Herhalde. Başka. Hello everyone. I would like to extend my warm welcome to all of you. The second uh, symposium of business and economics and education. Uh, I'm glad to be here uh, to manage this session. Today we are uh, five speakers. Uh, we are talking about the accounting and finance uh, topics. Uh, two participants from the uh, Philistine, Palestinian. Uh, how can I pronounce? I'm not sure. If the Tariq help us, I will be very happy. Uh, one of them is uh, Professor Abdullah Rahman. Is here, Mr. Rahman. Hey, buradayım hocam. Hey, Tariq burada. Buradayım hocam. Uh, Tariq. Hello, Tariq. How are you? Fine, fine. How are you? How are you, Professor? Everything is great. Evet. Nasılsınız hocam? <laughs> Thank you very Allah much. Olsun. Evet. Allah olsun. Mr. Abdurrahman Rashman Rashwan is here. Do you hear me, Mr. Rashman? Is here. Er Rahman Muhammad. Diğer oturum kapanmış Alper. Süresi bittiği için. Yasin Şehidoğlu'nu. Provis session uh, held it. Please help the chair of the professor Yasin. Okay. Let's start the, uh, our topic here. Uh, my former student Tarek is here. I am very happy to be with you, Tarek. Always you support our organization. Let's start with you. Okay, Today, Hocam. Tarek, topic is financial performance of the listed firms in uh, Palestine. You can start. I wanna invite you to present your paper. Thank you very much, Hocam. Bana büyük fırsat verdiğiniz için çok teşekkür ederim. Hala Türkçe konuşuyorum. I'm very happy. I'm very happy to be in... Turkish always. Evet, evet. Ama biraz... Try to speak Arabic. Evet, tabii, tabii. Arapça tercih ediyorum ama uzun zamandan e, Türkçe hiç konuşmadım. O yani biraz unuttum. <gülüyor> Bekliyoruz. You, you can speak English or Turkish. O zaman, e, o zaman in this presentation I will uh, talk English. Uh, okay. I'm, very, I'm very happy to be in a second time. Uh, it's a second time for me in this uh, great symposium. It's a, a great opportunity to be with you, Hocam, uh, gerçekten. Uh, I want to, in this presentation, I will talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the financial performance of listed uh, firms in Palestine. Uh, it's a simple paper. I depend on descriptive uh, statistics uh, about the COVID uh, uh, uh, financial performance. May before. I interrupt you, Tarek, may I interrupt you? Please mm. skip the theoric uh, methods. Uh, tamam, hocam. Inşallah. Talk about the results or your İnşallah hocam. İnşallah. Okay. Okay hocam. Uh, in Palestine, Palestine is not safe from COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, any, uh, until now, we have uh, more than uh, 200, uh, 285,000 confirmed cases. We have a 3,000 death of COVID-19. Uh, it's, uh, it's alarming rate. It's a dangerous rate for Palestine because Palestine is a small country. Uh, the outbreak of this disease, uh, combined with declaration of a state of emergency, a lockdown, general lockdown in Palestine, and lead to 12% decline in our GDP. GDP in Palestine declined 
approximately 12%. Uh, percent. The primary objective of this uh, study is to describe and explain the, diff the impact of COVID-19 on the financial performance of Palestinian listed firm and, the, and its ability to continue as a going concern. Uh, the study contribution is uh, in this uh, study. I depends on I depend on a multiple uh, traditional ratio, uh, traditional financial ratio. Uh, I employ the Z-score Altman Altman model to provide a general insight about a company's ability to go in concern. And this study, uh, this is this study talks about particular country. Actually, Palestine have several financial distress before COVID-19, and COVID-19 increases this, uh, these problems. Uh, we have uh, total population is 46 uh, listed firm, total uh, listed firm in Palestine, uh, 46 listed firm. I, I selected for uh, due to data availability, uh, I selected uh, 44 uh, listed uh, firm and range in two intervals before and after COVID-19, third, uh, fourth uh, quarter of, two, uh, of the year 2019 and the first quarter uh, of, uh, of the year uh, 2020 is uh, the period before COVID-19. Uh, second, third and uh, fourth quarter of 2020 is during, during COVID-19. Uh, as I stated earlier, I used several ratios such as current ratio, debt ratio, debt to equity ratio, earnings per share, net, net profit margin, return on assets, and finally total assets turnover. Also, I computed a multivariate model, the uh, Altman model Z, a score to forecast the ability to continue as a going concern or the forecasting the financial failure of the listed firm during this pandemic. Uh, I used two statistical techniques. Uh, first, paired, paired sample t-test to explain or to test the first hypothesis about the effect of COVID-19 on financial performance to make a comparison before and during uh, COVID-19. And then uh, to examine the effect of sector, to what extent the effect of co uh, the, uh, the uh, COVID-19 affect uh, financial performance from one sector to another, which sector is uh, primarily have a negative consequences. I use uh, uh, analysis of variance, ANOVA, to determine or to test this hypothesis. Uh, in short, in short, uh, the first hypothesis test whether uh, there is a significant decline in listed firm financial performance, as stated in this table, as expected, most of listed firms financial indicator have been affected negatively due to uh, the outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, this table shows debt ratio, debt to equity ratio experienced a significant increase during the outbreak of COVID-19, which means a high leverage. Uh, too much dependence on debt, especially long-term debt, such as loans and long-term no, uh, loans, etc. Uh, regarding the profitability and the activity ratio, uh, the, the average total assets turnover, earnings per share, return on assets decreased significantly after the spread of COVID-19 due to the general lockdown that the country, that, that the country witnessed, which negatively affected the overall financial performance of listed firm. Regarding the firm's ability to continue as going concern, uh, the mean value of this score also significantly decreased. Uh, ANOVA table is very large, so I just uh, listed the main uh, result. As stated in this table, all approximately all financial ratio provide us a negative indicator. But this uh, negative uh, result differ from one sector to another. The most affected sector uh, in our country is investment sector. And a debt ratio, debt equity ratio uh, increase in all sector, but in investment sector, it's too much. Uh, total asset turnover, return on assets, earnings per share also decrease, but in investment sector, uh, more significant. The, uh, the, negative, uh, the negative effect in investor, the investment sector is too much. Also, I, uh, the same thing in the score. Finally, uh, consequently, the outbreak of COVID-19 has significant uh, negative impact on Palestinian listed firm, like, like any other country in the world. The degree of impact is varying from one sector to another. Uh, for instance, as stated earlier, the investment 
insurance banking sector has in, uh, had experienced the most negative impact, especially investment sector. Uh, on the other hand, service industry sector also experienced negative impact, but with lower, with lower degree. Uh, thank you very much, Dindiz. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Tarek, for your good uh, presentation, fruitful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we understood that uh, the negative impact on the Palestinian companies, uh, the COVID-19 uh, had a ne negative impact on your companies, uh, like the Turkish companies. Uh, this uh, outbreak uh, of the COVID uh, has huge impact uh, on every file of the, uh, our life. We can uh, see these types of negative impact our companies. And then, uh, second, uh, before the second speakers, uh, is there anybody to ask uh, any question to Tarek, Professor Tarek? Uh, there is no question. Uh, let's move on the next speaker. Uh, I saw the Beza. Beza is here. Professor Beza, Mina. Yes, I'm here. Just a minute. Yeah. My media is Speak fine. loud a little bit, please. Uh, I cannot hear you. I'm using my earphone, though. Is it okay now? If not? No. Uh, also, Najam, did you? How is the quality of the voice? I, I am hearing it. The voice is good, I think. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, Professor Hello. Tarek. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Beza. Okay. Sarmash, okay. Uh, uh. Someone else is getting into. I guess. Okay. Uh, Beza, you, can, you can start. You can okay. start. Uh, but first of all, can please? I'm going to please, share my uh, Tarek, screen. Please, right? uh, Tarek, close your share. Yeah, I need tamam, to hocam, share. Tamam, hocam. I post okay. it. Thank okay. you very much. I close it. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Now I'm starting my um, presentation. Uh, so uh, let me go with the. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess. PDF is making a problem, so let me... Your voice quality is so low, please speak loudly a little bit. Okay. Or uh, come close your okay. earphone. Okay, okay. sure. Okay. Uh, I guess good. it is better now. Huh? Okay. Okay, so uh, today, first of all, thank you very much for uh, giving me time to present my latest working paper titled How Infectious Diseases Alter Risk Transmission Between Equity and Commodity Markets. So uh, what was mainly our motivation in this paper is that I mainly aim to investigate how the risk transmission is happening between equity and commodity markets, and especially doing infectious diseases. What this means is that we are not particularly uh, narrowing ourselves to COVID, but also we are taking into account other pandemic and epidemic periods in the last decade, such as SARS, MERS, or swine flu. Uh, we will be using Hafner and Harvard's volatility spillover test. I'm not getting to the details, but in the methodology part, I'll quickly talk about why this test is the most suitable test for our uh, research question. So as an outline, I'll quickly move on to my motivation and uh, quickly talk about the literature review and then uh, move on to analysis data and finish with results. So for the motivation, uh, we know that infectious diseases are considered to be a systemic risk for markets. Why? Because it, is, it cannot be avoided, first of all, especially uh, for the COVID case, we see that the whole economy, global economy, was put into hibernation. There has been severe contractions in output and employment, and therefore uh, this is a critical risk for all markets. And 
This systemic risk, as we know from the literature, can cause contagion between assets. What this means is that even if you do not put all your eggs in one basket, there will be no diversification benefit. All assets will be affected negatively. In our case, uh, we particularly uh, employ uh, 10 countries' data, uh, which have the highest number of COVID cases as of 15th of March. These are US, Brazil, India, Russia, UK, France, Italy, Spain, Turkey, and Germany. And these countries are happening to be the uh, developed and major emerging countries, by the way. So this is why our research question is more important than ever. And uh, we will also be looking into gold and oil markets. Uh, and shortly, I'll show you the graphs on why these two commodities are critical in this question. And lastly, we will look whether um, if there is a risk spillover, I mean, if there is a transmission of risks between assets, uh, is this spillover valid only for COVID-19 or has this been the case for the other uh, diseases as well? So for the... Uh, Graphs, uh, you can Professor sure. Beza, if to speak the uh, conclusion, we will be very happy. Uh, we don't uh, have enough time. Okay, uh, sure. As you know, uh, sure. we have a, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, I'll quickly go into the uh, graphs. So as you can see, gold and oil has experienced a significant uh, fluctuations in the last decade, but especially in the last year. And therefore, gold and oil are significantly important for our case. Uh, for the data, we, uh, uh, we use a specific construction of uh, data. And if you want to have uh, further details, you can contact me by person. So if we will move to the results, we, uh, what is critically important is that uh, the causality invariance, which means that the causality between the markets to the equity market volatility tracker, we see that uh, uh, equity market volatility infectious diseases feeds risk in all markets except Turkey and India. Uh, why Turkey and India are the exceptions, we do not know at this stage, but they seem to have their own dynamics. Uh, so what this means is that uh, infectious diseases do not have a contagion effect in Turkey and India. But on the other hand, we see that uh, if there is a... a huge infectious disease uh, making a con um, uh, giving a critical uh, impact on the global economy uh, this means that gold and oil with other equity markets in the 10 big uh, econ uh, equity markets all are affected negatively so there is a causality invariance between infectious diseases and also with all these asset markets so is this uh, case um, valid only for COVID-19, we check it, and we see that uh, not necessarily. For the previous diseases also, this is the case, but what is different in COVID-19 is that we mainly divide our sample into pre-COVID and COVID times, and what we see is in the pre-COVID times, uh, infectious diseases do not have a contagion effect on other markets. So, for SARS or swine flu or H1N1 cases, we do not see a contagion. They do not have a negative effect on equity market. On the other hand, uh, these uh, cases, for the other cases, um, for if there is an infectious disease going on, the, uh, if, and if this is highly significant, it affects mainly developed markets such as US and UK. So still infectious diseases, transmiss risk to all markets, but again, there are exceptions such as Brazil, Spain, and Turkey. Uh, so mainly these are my results. Thank you for listening. If there's any uh, question, I would like to be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, uh, Beza. Beza talk about the uh, equity markets, and uh, we understood that there is a negative e effect on equity markets. COVID negatively impacts uh, on uh, equity markets. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody to ask question? No question. Uh, I would like to I'm invite, here. Uh, invite here. from Palestinian I'm, uh, I'm here, Dr. Abdal Hello. I'm here, Dr. Abdal Hello, in uh, Palestine. Oh. 
Okay. Gaza. Okay. I'm uh, I welcome. am the Dr. Abdrahman Ashwan. Uh, yeah, hi. welcome to Sessim. Dr. Yes. Aiden, hi. Uh, I'm sorry, very sorry uh, for late. I uh, want to share uh, my paper now. Okay, okay, you can share, you can share. I would like to invite uh, you share your presentation. Uh, did you use before the Zoom? First of all, you can present okay. your paper. Okay. Share screen button, you can see at the bottom line. If you are ready, you can start. Okay, okay, okay. You have 10 minutes. Okay. Be, re be relaxed, please. You can share your results. I will be happy to listen to you. Do you see green button at the bottom? Share screen. If you click the share screen, do you hear me? Okay, okay. How can I pronounce your name? Etidal uh, Hello. Hello, yeah. Miss Hello. Hello. Sorry, but we're trying to share the screen. Did you see share screen? Yes, button? here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to open your presentation. Okay? okay, First okay. Thing, firstly, open your presentation and then click the button, share screen. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay. okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Has started. You achieved. Thank you very much. Okay. We are looking thank forward to seeing you. Yeah, you can start. You can I start. Okay. Thank you for this great chance. Yeah, okay. you have a 10 minutes. You have okay. a 10 minutes. Okay, our paper titled Impact on Risk Management and Assessment. And control governance in the Palestinian government sector. Okay, we can see your presentation clearly. Miss Hello, can you hear me? machines and computers perform tasks that mimic those performed by intelligent objects, such as the ability to think or learn from past experiences or other processes that require mental processes. And it has become the focus of business com communities and economic institutions and the opportunities it creates. Current trends suggest that artificial intelligence will have the greatest impact on the global economy according to a report by the McKinsey Global Research Institute. Artificial intelligence is for the procedures through technology to achieve the quality of the internal audit process. And I think auditing profession is one of the professions that has undergone many changes. The emergence of Artificial intelligence technologies, the term automation of automated processes emerged as a new auditing technique recently. Some organizations have collaborated with AI providers to use these systems in the audit process and frequent manual auditing tasks such as risk management and internal control testing can be automated. The auditing process helped with the use of artificial intelligence technologies, improving the efficiency and effectiveness of internal audit and completing internal audit tasks at the lowest time and at a lower cost, which contributes to improving the quality of audit services, supporting audit strategy and reducing audit risk. The auditing profession may now face many challenges, including how to deal with artificial intelligence technologies that impose a new reality on the audit environment. Auditors 
must develop their own skills and expertise through which they can possess scientific knowledge and professional experience to develop positive aspects of artificial intelligence application, innovative methods that support their effort to support auditing, strengthen governance procedures, manage and evaluate risk, and examine and evaluate the internal control system. The study problem. The main question, what the impact of the use of artificial intelligence on the internal audit process and its impact on risk management, control, and governance in the Palestinian government sector? The sub-questions are, what's the impact of the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process on risk management and evaluation in the Palestinian government sector? What's the impact of use of artificial intelligence? And what the impact of the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process on strengthening governments, governance procedures in the Palestinian government sector. The objectives of this study. The main objective of this study is to find out the effectiveness of the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process and its impact on risk management, control, and governance in the Palestinian government sector, which has been identified through sub-objectives. One, to show the impact of the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process on the management and evaluation of risks in the Palestinian government sector, to show the impact of the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process on the examination and evaluation of the internal control system, and the impact of the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process on strengthened governance procedures in the Palestinian government sector. The hypothesis. In order to achieve the objectives, the main hypothesis is what's the impact of the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process and its impact on risk management, control, and governance in the Palestinian government sector. sub hypothesis there is an impact on the management and evaluation of risk in the Palestinian government sector. There is an effect on the use of artificial intelligence in the, inter in the internal audit process on the examination and evaluation of the internal control system. And there is an impact on the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process on strengthening governance procedures in the Palestinian government sector. The study population. The study population consists of the director of the audit department, the head of the audit department, and the internal audit editors in the 40 member Palestinian government ministry. And the method of comprehensive inventory was used for the small size of this society. The study tool, we used a questionnaire list as a key tool, where the survey list was developed in the light of comprehensive review of previous theoretical and scientific studies on the study variables. The study results. The use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process has a significant impact on the management and evaluation of risks in Palestinian government ministries. And internal auditing using artificial intelligence techniques helps improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the audit process and contributes to increasing the quality of internal audit services and reducing risk by helping the company's management improve the means used to protect the organization's assets and control performance. There is also a significant impact on the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process on the examination and evaluation of the internal control system in the Palestinian government ministries. And the AI tools are a supportive strategy for the completion of internal audit procedures through the use of the technology to achieve the efficiency and quality of the audit process. Where the efficiency of the audit process is utilized in the evaluation of the financial and accounting control system. The use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process plays a critical role in identify, identifying weaknesses and deviations related to internal control and providing advice and solution appropriate to eliminate them. There's also a significant impact of the use of artificial intelligence in the internal audit process to strengthen governance procedures and mechanism in Palestine government ministries through the evaluation and realization of transparency and responsibility at their principles, and also to give confidence to management processes and financial reports at the use of AI tools helps an internal audit process to support improving an effective governance framework to help the management of the institution to exploit its resources efficiently 
making it indispensable to rely on it, which will prompt many government ministries to pay attention to improving and developing the performance of internal editors, thereby raising the efficiency and effectiveness of the internal audit process. There are also many difficulties and many difficulties that limit the use of artificial intelligence technologies in the field of internal audit in Palestine government ministries, including the high cost of purchasing or developing specialized electronic auditing techniques and software. In addition, the electronic internal audit process needs to be regulated in terms of the issuance of professional laws and standards governing the use of electronic digital auditing. Recommendation, the need to direct Palestinian government ministries to adopt the use of artificial intelligence application in the internal, internal audit process that they provide reduced time and costs and increase the efficiency of the functions of the internal audit process in light of the vast amount of data and complex reports, and then help them, help them reach rational decisions and the need to enhance the awareness of internal auditors of the importance of the use of artificial intelligence technologies and its role in achieving the quality of the audit, conducting the risk assessment process, examining internal control system, and strengthening the governance system in Palestinian government ministries. Difficulties that limit the use of artificial intelligence techniques in the field of internal auditing in Palestinian government ministries must be overcome. These include the large cost, uh, the high cost of purchasing or developing specialized technology and software in the field of auditing. In addition, the electronic internal audit process needs to be regulated in terms of the issuance of professional laws and standards governing the use of electronic digital auditing. It's also worth focusing on training internal auditors in Palestinian government ministries to use artificial intelligence technologies and programs to use their services in the audit process so that they can see the latest technological advances in the field of artificial intelligence. Thank you very much for good listening. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Hallow. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, constructive uh, presentation. Is there anybody uh, asked the question, Ms. Hallow? Ms. Hallow underlined the uh, relationship between intelligent uh, technology and the internal auditing. Uh, as an auditor, we will be ready artificial intelligence intelligency, uh, in this century. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Is there anybody to ask question? If there is no question, uh, I have to move on the next speaker. Uh, next speaker is uh, just a second. Mr. Hakan Uslu is here. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, we are ready. Let's start, please. Okay. <clears throat> we have a 10 minutes. Okay, after the 10 minutes, we get a question. Okay, you see my screen now? Yes, we can see. We can okay. see clearly. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Hakan Uslu. I'm an assistant professor at Yemen University, Department of Economics. Uh, this is uh, one of my ongoing studies, and this is not a completed study, and I'm still working on this study, and I just wanted to present my study here and get your uh, comments and your adv advice, uh, especially from uh, Dr. Aydin Karapunar and other participants. And the study is about the how the COVID-19 pandemics affected the financial markets in Turkey. And particularly, uh, actually I have a huge introduction and literature review, but I want to skip these uh, steps to save time for discussion. Uh, basically- We wanna share more time results. We wanna share more time your results. Okay. Okay, basically in this study, uh, I, uh, I analyzed the 12 banks in the uh, traded under the banking uh, financial sector and in Borsa Istanbul. Uh, just want to skip here. Yeah. And in this study, I aim to analyze how each of the banks 
traded on Borsa Istanbul is affected by the pandemic. And for this purpose, I empirically analyzed the relationship between the changes in the stock return rates of banks and the number of coronavirus cases and CDS premiums. So I used a comprehensive data set, uh, which includes the number of daily coronavirus cases in Turkey and daily stock values of the banks traded in Borsa Istanbul and a credit default swap index, and which describes the country's uh, risk premiums. And in the econometric analysis, uh, the rate of return of the daily share values of banks uh, used as dependent variable and the number of COVID-19 cases and CDS premiums uh, were included in the analysis as independent variables. And the data set covers uh, 12 banks in total. And these banks are traded under the banking sector in Borsa Istanbul. I obtained the stock, uh, data for stock prices and CDS from Thomson Reuters data stream. And the information for uh, coronavirus cases is from uh, our Vortin data website. And this website uh, securely provides the uh, daily number of uh, coronavirus cases for each country. And my data set covers the time period from the beginning of the pandemic to 19th of July, 2010. Uh, I just want to see how increases and decreases uh, affected the uh, stock returns separately. Uh, therefore, I used uh, a nonlinear autoregressive distributed lag model. So in this model, I have uh, positive or increases in the number of cases and decreases in the number of cases and same for CDS premiums and how these increases and decreases uh, affected the, our uh, dependent variable stock prices. And I'm going to skip these calculation steps and uh, actually this is the uh, nonlinear ARDL model. Uh, for estimation, we have dependent variable here <clears throat> and uh, our interest variables. These are the long run variables and the uh, short run variables uh, and the uh, theta and delta symbols here and uh, here. Uh, these symbols indicate the long term asymmetric parameters for positive and negative shocks in uh, COVID-19 cases and CDS premiums respectively. And as I said before, uh, the white part of the uh, equation shows the long run impacts and the uh, black part of the equation shows the uh, short run impacts. And here I, uh, to estimate the NRDL model, uh, the series I used in the study have to be stationary at a level or at first difference. If the series are the second uh, order uh, stationary, then we cannot use the NRDL model. So our uh, unit root test results shows, except CDS, uh, all the series are stationary at level and the CDS becomes stationary at the uh, first uh, difference. In the second step, I uh, have the long run co-integration uh, bounce test uh, to examine if the variables are uh, co-integrated co -integrated in the long run. So based on these results, uh, we can say, uh, there is a statistically significant long-term long -term, uh, relationship between the uh, variables in the model. So this uh, table shows, actually, uh, I, uh, I just want to, uh, to mess and uh, avoid mess and confusion. 
uh, I will present these tables in two parts because it's a very uh, big table. And uh, I have two groups of banks. And in the first table, I have Akbank, Albaraka, Garanti, uh, ICBC, Ishbank, and QMB Finance Bank. So when we look at the results, the increases in the number of coronavirus cases has a negative effect on the stock price of the QMB Finance Bank and, uh, and the increases in the coronavirus case, uh, case uh, do not have a significant impact to other banks. Uh, also, the increases in CDS premiums uh, negatively affected the shares of the Adbank, Albarak, and Garanti, and positively affected the uh, shares of QMB Finance Bank. Uh, for the second group of banks, uh, the increases in the uh, number of coronavirus cases positively influenced the shares of the Sheker Bank and uh, Turkey Kalkınma Bankası, and uh, increase in CDS premiums negatively affects the uh, Sheker Bank and uh, Turkey Kalkınma Bankası. And besides that, uh, I have uh, asymmetric relation table or wild test results. So the, uh, in slide 14 and 15, we see the asymmetric relations, long-term asymmetric relations between the number of coronavirus cases, CDS and uh, stock prices. So, for this, uh, the, based on the results in this table, the, the asymmetric relations among these study variables are exist, uh, and also positive shocks in the number of coronavirus cases negatively affect the QMB Finance Bank here, and uh, <clears throat> but positive shocks has no significant effect on the bank's share values. Also the positive shocks in CDS has negative effect on uh, Adbank, Albaraka, Guarantee, but positively affected the QMB Finance Bank. And besides uh, these analyses, we also have some te diagnostic tests to test the reliability of the uh, model, uh, including the serial correlation LM test, BPG heteroskedas test and uh, Jacobera normality test. And uh, according to this uh, results of this diagnostic test at 5% significance levels, uh, the models for the banks do not have normality autocorrelation or heteroskedas problems. And finally, I have Kusum and Kusum Q graphs uh, to test if there is a structural break in the series. And the uh, uh, Kusum and Kusum graphs shows uh, the predicted parameters in the models are stable. I also included uh, the Kusum and Kusum graphs for the each bank. Here is uh, a bank. If you want to sum up, uh, we will be very happy. Mr. Okay, Art. yeah, uh, I'm going to finish. Although there are some uh, deviations uh, in the series, uh, these deviations are uh, negligible. Uh, and it can still be said that the series uh, are uh, stable because these uh, deviations uh, returns to the specified uh, confidence intervals. And these are for QMB, Half Bank, Shaker Bank, and Finally, Yapu Kredi Bank. Thank you. Is there any question? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Hakan. Is there any question to Mr. Hakan? There is no question. Thank you very much for your presentation. You underline the relationship between number, number of the COVID-19 and the share price. Uh, uh, at the beginning of the symposium, there is a paper presented by Professor uh, Monica. Bo uh, Monica. Uh, she underlined the relationship between 
uh, two things. Uh, she said that there is a negative uh, relationship between share price and the uh, COVID, uh, the number of the COVID-19. Uh, in your paper, we saw that you uh, analyze uh, company by company, share by share. Uh, uh, your preliminary result uh, uh, is sufficient, uh, satisfactory. Thank you very much for, uh, for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, Final uh, speaker is Mr. Arif. Arif is here. Mr. Arif. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello, welcome to our session. We are very happy to listen to you. Thank you, Professor. We have 10 minutes. We have 10 minutes. Okay. I will try to speed up. Thank you, yeah. Professor. Yes. Yeah. Last session, your presentation was halted. Okay, can it be seen? Yeah. Okay, thank you for the... Yeah, start the screen sharing. A little bit of with my... Yes, please wait. You can start. Is there a problem? Try again, please. First, yes, yes. To leave the share screen. Okay, we can see. Okay, everything's all right. We can see your presentation. Yes, but. I cannot yeah. see the screen, sorry, wait. We can see your conclusion now, your conclusion page. Okay, uh, I, uh, I'm i sorry because I have trouble with my monitor. Yeah. So while waiting, I will inform. You can quickly sum up your presentation. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And so you can share your conclusion. We are looking forward to listening to you. Yes. So my presentation is about uh, the impact of COVID-19 in the production of oil palm oil in Indonesia. As you have my already known that uh, uh, in the global globally in the COVID-19 has bring uh, various impact in various sectors, including in the agriculture and the palm oil. However, in Indonesia, our sector in agriculture uh, positively grow, while other sector like such as mining and uh, communication and uh, uh, construction is uh, decreasing. And the growth is minus, but the agriculture remain positive. One of the factor is due to the uh, oil palm sector. So oil palm has uh, many downstream products. Uh, it can be used for soaps, it can be used for uh, biodiesel, it can be used uh, for cosmetic, for cooking oil. So the oil palm sector remain growth positively, mainly due to this factor. Uh, first, the government of Indonesia improved the composition of biodiesel blending in the fossil fuel from 20% to 30%. So the market and the demand is increasing, was increasing last year. Uh, the second factor is uh, because the pandemic needs uh, people to often washing their hand while uh, to make the soap, uh, they use also uh, the palm oil product. So this is uh, two key factor which uh, make the oil, palm oil industry remain grow positively. Uh, aside from this, uh, the export of palm oil in to various countries also st remain stable, a bit decreasing in the volume, but the value is increasing. This also include uh, the export to Turkey. Uh, 
uh, fortunately uh, Indonesia uh, the palm oil sector remain positive. So this is the lesson uh, what can we learn because this bio uh, this palm oil industry uh, remain positive and uh, it also uh, bring benefit to many workers. Uh, it employs about uh, 4 million farmers and also about around 9 million uh, indirect workers. So I think that's all. Uh, I'm sorry because I cannot open my PC somehow hang up. I cannot move. Uh, brother, uh, I follow your presentation. Yes. Uh, another hall. Uh, yes. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. If you have any question, I will welcome you. Yeah. Is there anybody to ask question, Mr. Arif? If there is no question, I will uh, finish this session, this useful session. There are many participants and researchers from uh, all around the world. I'm very happy to be chair with your presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Prof. Yeah, have yes, a great buddy. day, all of you. Thank you, Hojan. Thank you. Very excellent uh, conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a great day, all of you. See you maybe third symposium yes. next year. Inshallah, Hojan, okay. inshallah. Thank you very much. Have Thank a great you. day. Thank Please you. take care of yourself. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>